Good morning. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for having me here. And I'm Jing Li. Today, I'm going to share our work published on IEEE uh, uh, transactions on security and uh, forensics. Uh, sorry, it's TIFFs, right? Um, the title is Secure Metric Learning via Differential Pairwise Privacy. People today become more and more care about their personal privacy. There are multiple ways in our life to collect our personal data, such as uh, search logs, medical records, and the genetic data. When they collect our data, they claim that they have removed our identities. But in the past 20 years, there are a bunch of studies have found that this anonymous data can still recognize who we are. So basically, it's not safe to simply apply anonymization during data collection. There have been a lot of research about how to uh, preserve our personal data. Uh, in this work, our research scope, uh, scope is to preserve privacy during query answer stage. Here is an example. Suppose we have a tabular data, tabular data like this. It, in, it contains the uh, specific information about employees in IT. The task is, is to answer the query of every salary of IT employees. It's pretty simple to compute the mean value of the uh, average salary like this. But with the deformation, we can, if an adversary is interested to the employee G's uh, salary, who can use this deformation to uh, inference G's uh, salary like this, because they have the Query exact query result and the prayer. The prayer contains the remaining n minus one employee's salary. That means the uh, employee G salary is exposed in this context. To avert this issue, uh, the differential privacy have been a popular concept to solve this kind of issue. The key idea is to introduce randomness to the mean function to enforce the, in, the inter input x and its neighboring inputs, let's say it's n minus one employee's salary. The uh, randomized uh, mean function will have x and x prime have the pretty similar op output. So that means as a result, the employee's average salary is not sensitive to every individual's employee's salary anymore. So in this case, we ensure the main function is uh, differential privacy. So if we abstract that concept in machine learning, we can see every time we can replace uh, the, the main function with uh, any complex algorithm. If the fed data is sensitive, we can create the DP version of the original algorithm. And, formal, and formally, we see a, a algorithm is differential private. If every individual sample's participation will not influence the algorithm output too much. There have been much work for furthering this direction, including the discriminative task and the generative task in recent years. Uh, in this work, we focused on this uh, We focused on distance metric learning. This is a basic application in machine learning. Um, distance metric learning aims to learn a transformation to partition the data in the embedding space. Um, different from the other discriminative tasks like classification and regression, the data are independent. The input for the distance metric learning, the data are often pairwise labeled like this. So if what if we want like, to apply the DP, the distance of uh, the 
differential privacy into distance metric learning. It seems we only replace the previous member into the individual pair, the participation. Actually, it's not that simple. You can see in this example, the original data set is like this, they are pairwise labeled. Here we call this is a prior knowledge about adversary. If the adversary is interested if, if interested in the, the relationship between Alice and Bob, uh, it's not, uh, if we only simply remove this edge, this edge from Alice and Bob, it's not private because the adversary is smart. They can uh, infer the, Alice, uh, the relation between Alice and Bob from G. So, so we observe that semantic pairwise relationship uh, is usually transitive. That leads to the DP for pairwise data is not a triple extension. So in our main framework, if we have uh, estimated the real prior knowledge of, about the adversary, the, uh, the distance metric learning can introduce some randomness to anticipate the gap between the original data set and the prior knowledge of the adversary. This will make the whole algorithm become differential private. From the uh, last pipeline, we can see the uh, uh, privacy uh, over pairwise data is closely related to the graph data, graph data privacy. In graph data privacy, there are two main concepts. One is HDP. HDP is just the naive remove, removing one edge of the uh, graph data. Also, it's really not sufficient because of transitivity. Also, there is the node DP. Node DP is to remove the maximum node, maximum degree node. Uh, in this figure, the maximum uh, maximum node node degree is uh, node s. So, if we want to use node dp, we just remove the remove remove four edges in this case. If we see pairwise data privacy, we really consider uh, besides we consider the transitivity risk. We also we also need to care about the feature difference exposure. Uh, I'll, in, I'll explain them from this figure. Consider the relationship between source node S and uh, target node T. There are two disjoint, two disjoint, uh, uh, disjoint uh, edge between S to T. So if we remove these two edges, then S is T is not joined now. Um, apart from this two edge, we can see S and T are in, uh, they are in different circle. So if they are in different circle, we can use uh, different, their difference to uh, inference, to infer the exact uh, feature of S or T. Given the return, return distance metric, we can combine the feature and the metric to further infer the relation between S and T. So we cannot, uh, let S and T in any circular. So we have the differential, differential power privacy definition like, like this. It's equally to the kappa edge DP. Kappa is calculated like this. PST is the edge disjoint ST passes and the C is the number of passes that can isolate S. But but these two terms are difficult to compute. We, we introduce a proposition one to compute kappa efficiently. Um, the main idea is to we relax this, the sum, sum, uh, summation of these two terms. Uh, we relate it to the, node deg uh, the, the degree of the node S minus uh, a term. This term is uh, increased the com increase the number of components by removing S from G. So it's 
it, the this idea is from graph property and can be known by uh, a lot of people working on graph theory. So, and given the uh, differential pairwise privacy, we implement differential pairwise privacy with distance metric learning like this, we have a study case on contrastive loss. If we define the contrastive loss like this, here is uh, to minimize the uh, distance between similar pairs. This, this term is to maximize the uh, dissimilar pairs. DW is the uh, distance between every two pairs distance, every two nodes different di distance. So the key idea to uh, to do to make the uh, distance metric learning into differential private private version is to inject noise according noise to on the gradients. So uh, there is a recipe about how to make your algorithm become differential private. The basic idea is to um, co compute the gradient sensitivity. If we use the Laplacian mechanism, L1, L1 uh, sensitivity needs to calculate. So uh, we refer the audience interested in this part to our paper for the details. Here are some experimental uh, results. First, uh, on this synthetic data set, we will see that our uh, new differential pairwise privacy results in the embedding about the embedding feature have the close have the uh, close uh, close chip with uh, a non private non private metric learning. That means uh, if given a proper privacy budget, our algorithm can preserve the utility of the original algorithm. Uh, our differential pairwise privacy can preserve the, uh, the utility of the original algorithm. Also, we compare the differential pairwise privacy with other baselines like input perturbation or node, node, node DP. Here is uh, because we, uh, it, when we do the batch optimization, we can use the sensit local sensitive reduction trick to uh, reduce the noise we inject during the optimization. And we can see, uh, like given the budget, privacy budget like four, our results is close to the uh, non-private version of metric learning. And in every data set, our algorithm is outperforms other baselines in terms of accuracy. Um, one of the uh, extension of this work is because DPP, differential pairwise privacy, is defined without, uh, without, concern, without concerning the sub, uh, subsequent algorithm because it's related to the data. In semi-supervised clustering, pairwise ranking, this kind of task, if they have pairwise labeled data, we can use the DPP definition here. Another extension of our work is to use more advanced privacy mechanisms. In this paper, we use the Laplace mechanism. You, one can also result to some approximate privacy mechanisms like uh, Gaussian because they have some good property. They can use a composition theory here to make the, uh, to improve the utility better. The first limitation of this work is uh, we only consider the worst, worst case DP. The worst case here is we consider the uh, adversary have N minus one, N minus one, uh, knowledge about the original data set. So it's uh, it's uh, defined the worst case, but sometimes it's too strict because if the batch is densely labeled, 
because uh, there are many transitivity clues for adversary to discover the the target relationship. So some uh, some recent work they use the average case DP to uh, to solve this kind of issue. Also, computer, uh, computation cost is another concern for this work because every time we need to know the kappa. Uh, from the computation of the kappa, we can see the it needs to traverse the whole subgraph to uh, get the exact kappa. This is the reference of this work that brings us to the end. Thank you for your listening. Yeah, thanks, uh, Professor. Uh, uh, thanks, Jun, uh, for your uh, exciting uh, presentation. Uh, very clear, and theoretical in depth. So right now we're open for questions. Do we uh, do we have any questions from the audience? You can use a chat box. But I think I, I think I see anything in chat box. So, or you can raise your hand. Oh, the audience remind me to try F eleven. Sorry, I didn't see that. Yeah, I can see the uh, group Thank chat. You. Oh, the first question is, okay. yeah. uh, have you considered about compare with other losses such as triplet loss? Oh, yeah. Um, for this question, um, um, we actually tried different losses, but um, because differential pairwise privacy is only defined is only determined by the labeled pairs in triplet in triplet losses such as in a batch you still have the uh, uh, connection pairwise the i mean the basic elements are still pairwise um but in triplet losses um, maybe maybe you will derive you will get a different kappa but um, you should uh modify the uh, Kappa computation slightly, I guess. And uh, another question is, is it possible to add generative data to protect privacy and the fool's model? Let me see. To fool's model. Oh, um, if I have understood your question, because our research scope is to answer the, the query on sensitive data, adversarial attack is to aims to attack the model, like if to see if model is safe to use to do prediction or something like that. Mm, I think there are two different uh, branches of about uh, privacy or security mode, so the secure model designing. Mm -hmm. Because I also I also have some work about adversarial samples design. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Also, thanks, uh, Jen Dong, for your interesting questions. So we we see do we still have some three minutes two to three minutes so we could have another question if there is is anyone raise hand <laughs> can I see um, may I ask a question oh uh, yes please please go uh, ahead. Please uh, refer to the uh, slides uh, distance matrix, uh, distance metric learning. Uh, uh, um, so, um, uh, can you explain the difference before uh, distance metric learning and other distance uh, measurements? Um, other distance, what, sorry, I can't uh, hear clearly. Uh, like the distribution distance or the space distance. Oh, oh, it's a good question. Um, 
Um, we focus on distance metric learning here refers to the uh, traditional distance metric learning. It's, it's based on sample level. That means you, your input data is pairwise labeled and you want the output is a distance metric. Um, also there are recent work about the uh, distribution um, level work. That means if you, you can add a small perturbation on the distribution level and then you will see if your um, uh, metric is is robust or not for the perturbation on the distribution. I think this, um, there are parallel work about the, um, uh, the, the data level and the, the distribution level. Okay, yeah. Thanks, I think it's about our time. Thanks, Jim, and also James Ada for your question. So we should proceed. Yes, I think it's time to proceed to the next presentation. Okay, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, exciting presentation. Thank you. Thank you.